Well, good evening, everybody, and God bless you on tonight, on this evening, today, December the 7th, 2021, the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in this day. We are just honored and excited uh, to be here, to see all of you that are chiming in, and we welcome you to Tuesday Night Teaching. Uh, God bless all of you. I see you, uh, Brother uh, Stephen Taylor, a man from Memphis, Tennessee, Faith Temple, Brother David Armstrong. Welcome to you, my brother. It's good to see you tonight. Uh, Sister Sharon Willis, always glad to have you uh, chiming in with us. Sister Dorothy Perriman, God bless you, my sister. Uh, God bless our dear sister. Good to see her. Sister Zephia, amen. We're yet praying for you and your family and uh, certainly celebrating uh, the wonderful legacy and life of uh, Mother Angeline Brown. Amen. Sister Dara Smith, God bless you, my sister. Good to see you tonight. Sister Jennifer Johnson, come on in. God bless you. Sister Catherine Williams, uh, amen. Magdalene Bell, I see you, VFM. You all are chiming in, and we're asking that you go ahead and like and share uh, the uh, the, the study on tonight, because I believe that something is going to be said that's going to certainly uh, bless all of you that are viewing and not only just viewing, but we encourage you to engage with us tonight. Uh, you can type your comments in the chat to help us teach uh, the Holy Writ, the Holy Word. Hey, Byron, good to see you, my brother. Amen. And we're just inviting uh, as many of you that can to come on in, come on in and let's be a part of this awesome uh, study on tonight. Well, uh, I didn't know exactly how things was going to flow today. Uh, as you all know, Pastor Sago and I have just celebrated uh, the 19th pastoral anniversary this past Sunday. It was an amazing celebration. Oh my God. I can't even begin to articulate uh, the spirit of God, the power of God, the anointing that was prevalent in that sanctuary on Sunday. And we certainly thank all of VFM for everything that you did to make that day a tremendous success. Uh, we celebrate you because if there were no you, there would be no need for Pastor Sago and, and I. And so we are grateful for the Victorious Faith Ministries Church family. And of course, on yesterday, we celebrated uh, 13 years of marriage. Uh, of course, he just had a birthday, turned 66. So it's just been an exciting season. Uh, we got off of our celebration this morning and he had to roll down to Mississippi. So I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to be on tonight, but he is back by popular demand. And we are so glad that our pastor is able to join us tonight. Hey, Pastor Sego. All right, all right. God bless, God bless. I've just been uh, backstage here kind of holding and uh, hearing, and certainly this is a fantabulous time, and I certainly want to appreciate, once again, I don't want to be repetitive, but I think that it's necessary just to appreciate all of you who have uh, joined in to help make this past weekend what it was. It was just wonderful. And we thank you so very, very, very much. Hello, Lady Barbara. All hey, right. All right. How are you? Doing? Oh, How are you? oh, yeah. We're, we're always glad to be able to be here with you and uh, to celebrate with you. I think that uh, after 13 years, the Lord has blessed us to uh, uh, become a great team. All right. I think we do good together. Well, two are better than one. Absolutely. Yes. That's word. Uh, you, you are the best half, and I am just so grateful that God has blessed us to uh, minister and uh, not just minister, but do life together uh, Absolutely. the past 13 years. And so we're grateful. I see uh, Sister Talisha, Nicole is on, and your godson, Pastor uh, Prophet Kerry Car Gitrun. God bless you. Right. Right. Thank Peace you, son. And certainly to uh, brother, uh, who was that brother? Alfred, bless you, bless you. And so we're just excited to do ministry together. Uh, for the past few weeks, we've been kind of talking about things relative to 
emotional healing. And even on last week, we talked about some things relative to marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, just looking at where we are today um, with this pandemic and the um, impact that is having on our nation, uh, the impact it has had on the church world. Um, and I was talking with my dad just a couple of days ago, and we were just talking about, you know, are people really paying attention to what God is doing? And, and not that God sent the pandemic because we know uh, that he allowed it. Uh, sickness and all of those things are from the devil. Right. But God has allowed this for a specific reason. And I am mighty afraid that although our church is closed down during the pandemic and, you know, now that we're opening back up and uh, but it looks as if uh, people have gotten really lax. People have gotten, let me just put it this way, lazy. Mm -hmm. They've become complacent uh, when it comes to the things of God. Now, life is going on. People are still mm -hmm. shocked. People are still traveling. Yep. People are spending money. People are going to games. Uh, people are going to Walmart. People are uh, 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 doing everything they want to do. But it looks as if when it comes to the things of God, that's been placed on a back burner. And so tonight we want to just kind of talk about uh, the test of true commitment. What does that mean? look like? What is God requiring of us as a church? And how should we respond to this pandemic? And when I talk about responding, I'm not talking about the wearing of masks and the vaccinations and all of those, you know, we are doing that. We're getting boosters and we're yet socially distancing and cleaning our hands and sanitizing. And that, that goes without saying. But how should we respond? Uh, Sister Linda Campbell, God bless you. How should we respond uh, as a church to what is happening in the world today? Because I'm mighty afraid that the church is missing what God is saying because our commitment is waning and uh, the passion that we once had for God, we don't seem to have that anymore. Well, yeah, well, you, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. The thing of it is, is that I think that uh, with the advent of the uh, virus and the uh, coronavirus and COVID-19, then uh, it seems as if uh, by not being in person in church, it gave the people uh, an opportunity uh, seemingly without excuse, you know, it, it, it gave them, well, let me just say it gave them an excused absence, mm -hmm. gave them an excused absence from uh, church, you know, but it was never intended to be uh, an excused absence from commitment and from dedication. It was never intended as that, right? Uh, uh, and, and so as I think that, that, that we as a people, as we have uh, the tendency to kind of become lax and at ease in Zion, seemingly when things tend to uh, roll on for an extended amount of time. You know, it oh, seems okay. as if, yeah, go ahead. So let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. And we just talking. We just yeah. talking. And, and you all are free to chat and, and comment. So if it was so easy for people to become lax in a pandemic and get to the point where going to church now is a chore and uh, the things of God is second nature, I can take it or leave it. Were they true disciples in the first place? In other words, was this thing really in their heart? Well, and that's a good question there. And I believe that uh, part of this uh, pandemic, or part of the reason why God has allowed this pandemic is because of the fact that I believe that he used it in order to uh, shore up and to many times even show up 
you know, those who are really on board and things like that. You know, uh, I think that God has allowed this, as you were talking about, he allowed it for many reasons. And that I think that uh, to a great extent, the people, many people have uh, missed the mark and they have not really uh, 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 tied into uh, the purpose of it. And, and, and I, really, I, I don't think that, that many have really sought God uh, as to uh, what this thing is really all about and what should we be doing in a time of pandemic? How should it affect us? And uh, what should our stance and our uh, what should be our mindset? I don't think that people, many people, uh, just have not given themselves uh, to that level of thought. So uh, uh, it might be so, it might be so that uh, 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 they were not fully committed as well, but then uh, it may have been that during this time of disconnect that uh, perhaps the devil has been talking too much and has maybe tricked them uh, into uh, a place of complacency. Let me read a, a few scriptures because we want to kind of look at the life of Paul, the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. on tonight. Uh, Paul, probably one of my favorite uh, New Testament writers. In fact, <clears throat> if you study the New Testament, uh, most of the epistles, over half of the New Testament was written by the Apostle Paul. Look what he says in Philippians chapter three, starting at verse seven. And this is the New King James Version. He said, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Verse eight, yet I indeed, or yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. Notice what he said, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is come from God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I love this. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, we all know the story of Paul. Paul was a persecutor of the saints. Uh, Paul was one who, um, uh, he was circumcised on the eighth day. He uh, lived in a strict accordance with the law. He was from the tribe of, of Benjamin, he was a, the Bible says he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, oh, Hebrews. and a Pharisee. Uh, his father, we don't talk much about his father, but according to knowledge and the scholars, Paul's father was very wealthy. Uh, he was also a Pharisee. Uh, Paul was born in Tarsus. He was raised in Jerusalem. He sat at the feet of Gamal, who was perhaps one of the most famous rabbis of that day. Uh, if we could compare the back then Sanhedrin court where Paul was set at, uh, that would be compared to the Supreme Court today. Mm -hmm. So Paul was a bad boy. Uh, he had it going on, look seemingly from a natural standpoint. But notice what happened when Paul was converted. He came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He said, all of this that I have acquired, I count it as dung, D-U-N-G. And I don't want to get graphic to go into what that means, but, you know, he counts it as nothing that I may win Christ. Paul understood commitment. And that commitment, I believe, from Paul's stand standpoint, 
was that of self-sacrificing, self-sacrificing. He was saying, I give up everything that I may win Christ. He says, I put no confidence in the flesh. Uh, if anyone thinks uh, he may have confidence in the flesh, Paul said, I was one who could have really had a lot of confidence in the flesh because of all of my accomplishments, all of the things that I had masked, all of my education, all of my knowledge, all of my worldly wisdom, uh, the languages that I knew. But he says, all of this, I am sacrificing it that I may commit my entire life to Christ. And so when I look at that, it is my understanding through the word that <laughs> commitment is giving up everything and not just some things. You know, All right. I heard a woman, she preached a message once and it was kind of funny. Y'all can type this in the chat. She asked, are you a hog or a hen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Think about it. Are you a hog or a hen? Because the hen, surely, he or she, contrib she contributes to the breakfast in that <laughs> she donates her eggs. But in order to eat that ham, that hog got to give his life. <laughs> and so I believe God is requiring of us that we give not just an egg here or there for breakfast, but God is requiring that we give our all. Yes, well, yeah, well, you're exactly right. And uh, the thing of it is, you know, is that <clears throat> as far as commitment is concerned, uh, and, and before, before I, I, I go there, let me just, uh, uh, the Lord brought a scripture back to my memory in uh, when you asked the question about uh, whether or not individuals were really committed uh, in the beginning if they fell out, you know, during the pandemic, right? One thing about it, you know, trials, tests, tribulations, you know, it will reveal uh, really who you are. And the Bible says there in the book of 1 John, uh, chapter 2, verse 19, uh, John said, they went out from us, but they were not of us. Now, yeah, look, don't look at me cross-eyed, all right? This is just the Bible, okay? It says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. It says, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us, that they were not all of us. And so that brings back, that's the scripture that says that God has used this thing to reveal, you know, uh, where people really are uh, yeah. by their works, by their commitment, by their ability, their ability to uh, continue and to uh, stay with this thing, all right? One thing about it, you know, you know it, it, it doesn't take much to be committed when things are rolling along good, all right? When things are rolling along fine, when you, you know, there's no challenges, there's no obstacles, you know, it's just like driving down the interstate, you know, you know, it, it's easy to drive down the interstate, but when you're on a, a country road, you know, with turns and, and, and curves and bumps and, and uh, obstacles and stuff like that, then it's going to take some more skillful driving. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, 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 it doesn't take much, you know, to be uh, what what I used to hear m m my pastor say called a fair weather Christian. You know, it doesn't take that much for that, you know. But uh, when it comes to when the storms blow in, then that's when it's going to really reveal as to whether or not you are committed or not, you know. And that's what God wants us to do. He has allowed this thing to come in for revelation purposes. And for people to look, and, and, and I, I don't think that it means that God is throwing anybody out, but I believe, I believe that he's revealing uh, themselves to them, to the fact, praise God, that they can see that they need to do more. They need to shape up. They need to sure up some things. They need to come back. They need to rededicate. 
and uh, 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 in order to be able to come to the place where that God wants us. And that goes back to what you were saying that I don't believe that too many people, uh, are many, uh, well, I, I don't want to say everybody, you know, but I think that many people have not gotten the real gist of why God has allowed this thing and they don't seem to be concerned about it as to why uh, they've become at ease in Zion. And that's the thing. That's the issue right there. Because the church, to me, is really missing on a greater scale what I believe this thing is more spiritual. Uh -huh. It's this pandemic that we are dealing with. Uh, because understand, uh, if, if we don't adhere to what God is saying, what God is doing right now as a church, Mm -hmm. uh, I believe down the road they're going. That will be worse things to come upon the church, mm -hmm. because this issue that we're dealing with now, I believe the church is the one that has the answer. But the yeah. problem with the church now, we're looking at God as an option. Mm -hmm. You know, we we have options now. You know, we say stuff. We get up on Sunday morning. Well. Am I going to go to church? Am I going to go to the mall? You know, am I going to go to the church? Or am I going to go see grandma? Am I going, you know, am I going to pray this morning or fast? Or, you know, am I going to Bible study? Or, you know, am I going to go to the mall? And now God has become somewhat an option to us. Mm -hmm. Where he used to be our focal point. Mm -hmm. You know, God mm -hmm. said, David was a man after my heart. He mm -hmm. was pursuing God. He was passionate about God. He was, you know, and say what you want to say about David. We know he made his mistakes, all of that, you know. But understand, David, the Bible says, he was a man after mm -hmm. he was pursuing. That's God it. Pursuing. We have stopped as a church. We have stopped pursuing God, he, I mean, you know, you see it, I see it, there are other pastors that see it. Our relationship with God is not that important anymore. Uh, you know, we're no longer passionate about Christ. Uh, we're no longer passionate about ministry. And I look at that scripture over there in Matthew 22 and 14, where it says, many are called, but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. And I asked the question, I said, well, who are the chosen ones? Mm -hmm. If many are called and few are chosen, who are the chosen? Mm -hmm. And the chosen are the ones who commit to the call. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's simple. The ones who answer the call, the ones who commit, uh, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. This thing about church, it's not a lot of do's and don'ts and legalistic views and you know, you got to wear this, you got to go here, you got to observe this day. You know, that's not what I'm saying. But I believe there needs to be a, a, a certain uh, degree of passion and commitment to where God says, I've got some, somewhat against you because you have what? You have left your first love. Right. And I'm going to get in trouble when I say this. But right. we have put our children ahead of God. We have put our jobs ahead of God. Uh, we have put our, our finances, our careers ahead of God. And I'm and I'm still when I talk to people, I'm talking about church people. Yes. They they want to make sure church is only an hour. You know, if you go over that hour, you know, if if it's an hour and five minutes, they get their purses, they're leaving. And they're running somewhere else to where they can be entertained for two and three hours. What has happened to the church? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, it's really something. And it is just amazing that I, I was listening to you earlier and you, you mentioned the word option. You mentioned the word option. And in my own study, that word came up again when I was uh, looking at uh, uh, you know, what is commitment? What is commitment? And it was saying that it is a state or quality of being dedicated to a person, uh, a cause, or to an activity. And it says that it is, an, uh, it is to engage 
uh, into an obligation or a decision that restricts or limits freedom of action and options. And mm -hmm. see, the thing of it is, y'all, is that when there is commitment, then uh, 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 you get rid of all of the options and everything because you are focused on this particular one thing, you know. And I know that for a lot of people that might sound negative, you know, because of the fact that people today, you know, they always want options. They always want a way out. They always want a way to uh, somehow make it easier, you know, and if it gets tough, if it gets rough, if it gets a little bit bumpy and hard, then they want the option of bailing out. But right. when there is commitment there, that option to leave uh, is not an option. It, it's not an option because of the fact that you've made the decision that I'm in this thing for the long haul. And as you said about Paul, I want to know him, whatever it takes, whatever is required of me, whatever I have to give up. And, and as you said, Paul, he was a greatly educated man. But look, he counted it as as unimportant. He counted it as dung uh, so that he might win Christ. He was willing to give all of, all of that up. Praise God. Amen. It was not an option to him to know Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't an option. It was a deep seated desire that he refused to give up. He had come to the point that, look, I've got to know him no matter what I have to give up. And that is something that it seems as if the church has left behind in this season. The church, had, they, they, they have left behind the desire yes. to know God. Yeah. Know him, you know, as, as it in the power of the Holy Ghost, in the fellowship of his suffering. This was Paul's quest. His desire was, Lord, mm -hmm. I want to know you. You know, if I have to go through suffering, you know, I, I mean, you suffered as Lord and Savior. I want to suffer with you, you know, because I know if I suffer with you, I'm going to reign with you. You know, when we come into our congregations, our services on Sunday morning, sometimes it's obvious that some people don't even have a proper uh, perspective and even image of who God is. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no reaching up. There is no there is no reaching out. You know, we really in our mind and, and, and I'm talking, you know, generally people have reduced God to that of, you know, somebody like them. You know, they have reduced, you know, they refer to him as the man upstairs, mm. they refer to him as Doc, you know, they refer to him as the big guy in the sky. Mm. You know, there is no, there is no reverence, reverence. No, no reverential fear, you know, and when I look in the Old Testament and see how the people did not honor God, they did not retain him. In, in, in their mind, in their knowledge. You know, the Bible says God gave, he gave them up. You mm. know, uh, even in the Old Testament, you know, when when the children of Israel, you know, they, uh, they, uh, they, they thought they had options. You know, when God took uh, too long to deliver them and Moses took mm. too long to come out of the mountain, you know, to bring the 10 commandments. Come on, Aaron, we got another option. Make us another God, make us mm. a golden calf. And people, are giving in to options. So what is happening? What is happening? The church slowly is losing its influence in the earth. Its, its, its influence, its ability to affect change, you know, its ability to affect lives, uh, uh, its ability uh, to walk in that authority and power because so many of the so-called people of God. Uh, you know, they've allowed this pandemic <clears throat> to give them options. And now the fervor has left. The fire has gone out. You know, there's no real quest, no real zeal. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and, and I see it not only here, but I see it across the board, you know. Now we'll come to the December the 31st and January number one, 2022, people will make New Year's resolutions. But understand, y'all, this Christian life has to be more than a New Year's re resolution. Right. There has to be a, a, a something that happens on the inside of us that says, I want God more than anything. I want him more than education. I want him more than money. 
You know, I want him more than food. I want God more than anything. And I think because David was after God's own heart, God blessed that boy. God blessed him. God honored him even as a child. When you would thought that the, the brothers that look kingly would be the ones who would be chosen, mm -hmm. they were not the ones. He said, no, go back and get that little ruddy, ready, uh, uh, little stinky sheep boy. Mm -hmm. He's the one I want to promote, the one who's after my heart. David was a worshiper. And I submit to every person this, this, this evening that's viewing this chat, that if you are committed to God, you are a worshiper. People who are worshipers are committed. They are committed. They're committed to the cause of Christ. They're committed mm -hmm. to the ways of God. Yes. Absolutely right. You know, the thing of it is, you know, and, and you was talking about that strong desire, mm -hmm. that strong desire. And it seems as if it's almost been a trick of the enemy, you know, to uh, 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 just utilize this pandemic. And, and I know that, 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 that it, it, it's because of the enemy, but God allowed it. We've already covered that territory, you know, but the enemy is using this thing seemingly so effective mm -hmm. to uh, 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 to, to move away the, the passion and the strong desire for, for, for ministry, for loving God, for knowing God, you know, because as I said earlier, they seem like uh, uh, that they are satisfied because of the fact that this is, this is an excuse. They're using this as an excuse or as a crutch and uh, therefore there is no longer that desire. But in order to be fully committed, in order to be fully committed to anything, to anyone, to anything, praise God, you've got to have a clear and personal compelling reason. There has to be a compelling reason, you know, and it seems as if we have forgotten, you know, the song that I used to, that we used to sing a long time ago, the reason I live this life that I don't want to be lost, you know, yeah. you know, I remember the old mother used to sing that song, you know, and they would just fervently go forth. They would find themselves in prayer and in seeking the Lord. And it seems as if the church of this season, the church of this age, has lost that desire, has lost that passion, mm. has lost that compelling reason. You know, y'all praise God, Jesus Christ is coming back again. And the Bible said that he's coming back for a church without a spot, spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing, you know. And so it is incumbent upon us uh, uh, to, 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 to be properly dressed and to be properly clothed and ready for him when he returned. But it seems as if, you know, we've come to the point now that, well, you know, uh, as the Bible talks about, you know, that he's been so long and nothing has changed and then nothing's going to change, you know. But look, when we see these things happening, it ought to remind us, praise God, that God is in control and that he is, uh, 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 he's looking for the church to be about the business. That's what Jesus said. Didn't you not know that I've got to be about my father's business? Mm -hmm. And so it seems as if we have left off uh, and forgot about our compelling reason. Seems like we have uh, uh, began to make excuses and uh, uh, not look at what God has done for us and not look at the goal that should be before us, which is uh, to please our father and to be able to uh, uh, dwell with him in peace and hear him say, well done, you know, at the end. And, you know, it seems as if this pandemic with all the dying and the sickness, and it ought to remind us, you know, that y'all, uh, uh, life as it is here is not permanent. Mm. It's not permanent. And so therefore we need to be ready, amen, for the next stage. Yeah. You know, I look at this pandemic as a shakeup for the church. All right. It's, it's, it's a shaking, you know, who is that uh, Ja'Kalen Carr sings the song, you know, I feel a, a shaking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I believe mm -hmm. God is really wanting to, and I'm not going to say try, because God don't have to try to do anything, but mm -hmm. God is wanting to shake the church back on its foundation. Mm -hmm. We've gotten away from that foundation of, of holiness, the foundation of righteousness, uh, the foundation of true commitment, uh, you know, we've gotten away from that. And, and when we when we look at that, uh, as I said earlier, 
you know, the Bible talks about over in Matthew chapter five, where it tells us to let our light shine that men may see our good works, glorify the father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. We are the light of the world. It's talking about the church. You know, we are a city that sit on a hill that cannot be hid. And so if the if, if they can't see the light that's shining, that means we've hidden that light. That light is dark. Mm -hmm. And if the world be impacted for the better, it's going to be because of the church. But if the church is not committed, if the church is fighting, if the church is walking smooth footed and not need, and if the church is straddling the fence, you know, I mean, we, 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 we're not able to create a thirst in the lives of others. We're not salty enough as a church. In fact, when you look at the world, you know, the world is complaining. The world is, you know, a lot of them are, are, are uh, uh, giving up. The world is quitting. The world is talking negative. The world is talking suicide. The world is giving in to depression. Sometimes you hear the same language within the church. Right. You know, when the Bible speaks about God encouraging his people over there in Leviticus to be ye holy, for I am holy. You know, now I know we meant, we thought that meant, you know, don't wear makeup and, you know, wear long dresses and men wear white shirts and black ties and no tight pants, no tight pants and long dresses and, you know, uh, shame faceness and all of that. I mean, that's good. And what if that's what you want to do? But that's not what the Bible means when God says, be holy for I am holy. That word, when you uh, research it in the Hebrew, it means kadash, be holy, which means to be different. And mm -hmm. God wants the church world to be different. Yes, this pandemic has come. But one thing I've discovered, that in order for oil to come forth, that olive has to be crushed. Right. In order for wine to come forth, that grape has to be crushed. And we're in a period now where we're being crushed. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. being crushed. What's coming out of you? You know, what's in you will come out. And I believe more than ever before, God wants his people to rise to the occasion and be the people that he's called us to be holy, righteous, steadfast, committed, consistent, diligent, you know, wholeheartedly. I mean, if there was ever a time, let me put it to you this way, when it's not time to quit, now is the time. Mm -hmm. You know, right. that's, uh, baby, when I look at what's happening today, yeah. you know, and, I, and, 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 and you know what, it, it, I, I'm encouraged, y'all, I'm getting excited, <laughs> I'm encouraged because this is letting me know that everything God said in his word, it's literally right before our eyes coming to pass. Yeah. yeah. We said this now also in the last days. Perilous times would come. These mm -hmm. things that are happening, God already told us this would come. Now, when these things came, he said, when they start happening, now notice what he said. Mm -hmm. Go home. Don't go in the tile. All don't right. do it. You know, don't slow down. You know, he says, and more so, he said, look up because your redemption draweth not. In fact, he says over there in Luke chapter 9, I believe it is, no man having put his hand to the plow mm -hmm. and looking back, mm -hmm. you know, that means moving back from your commitment right, is right. It for mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. That's it. Hallelujah. That, that's, that's some ser serious declarations there. You know, when people fail to consider uh, their position right now, you know, if they've been faithful, if they've been diligent, if they've been uh, committed, you know, in times past and, uh, for some reason, have utilized this pandemic as uh, an avenue or as 
a, a crutch, you know, or a reason, you know, to give up and to back up, you know, then 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 they ought to be stirred in their mind the fact that the Lord say that you that that you're not fit for the kingdom, you know. And this is something that's serious. And I know, look, I know that 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 the grace of God, you know, is there to help us. Uh, to undergird us and to cause us to be able to be victorious. But God is not going to make us do anything, all right? It's up to us, praise God, to cultivate the, the uh, uh, allow the Lord to work through us to cultivate that desire, to cultivate that hunger, as you said, you know, to cultivate that thirst for the more of God. And that's something, amen, that we have to do as far as uh, 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 developing the mindset and nurturing that mindset that I want more of God. I want to please God, you know, and then I want to do the things. And we have to find ourselves doing the things, rather, uh, that will cause growth and maturity to the point that we come closer to the Lord. And that's why commitment is so important, you know. Uh, it helps to develop that relationship to the point that it becomes better and better. It grows, it matures to the point that it, it, it that it has the ability to uh, uh, to endure through whatever comes against it. it. You know, and I know that we've been talking about marriage and, and stuff. And, and look, this is the same thing with couples. You know, uh, as they go through things together and endure those things, where that commitment is there, it's solid. Then it begins to grow that commitment even more to the point that they become closer and closer and more uh, uh, conformed and concerned about one another. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the things of God. You know, we have to uh, 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 be uh, spiritually discerning to the point, you know, that we understand that uh, uh, what God is doing and see, I think that, that that that's some of the problem, you know, like the scripture says, talked about the, uh, the the sons of Issachar, how that they understood the times, you know, they understood the times and knew what to tell the people to do, you know. And uh, so it's important that we be able to discern, you know, what God is desiring, what he wants to the point, praise God, that we can find ourselves in the place where God can use us the most. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and, and being committed. Uh, to God, uh, committed to the things of God, committed to the ways of God, as we see where Apostle Paul was committed to the charge, he was committed to the call. Uh, but we know over there in 2 Corinthians 11, you know, it talks about how uh, uh, Paul, he was beaten, you know, with many stripes. Uh, it says here from the uh, verse 23 and 24 that from the Jews, I received 40 strips of uh, 40 stripes, mm -hmm. 40 stripes minus mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He talks about how three times I was beaten with rods, that this is a man who's committed to the ministry of God, mm -hmm. a man who's committed to the cause of Christ. He said, once I was stoned, mm -hmm. three times I was shipwrecked. Mm -hmm. A night and a day I have been in the deep. He talks in verse 26 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. In journeys often, I've been in dangerous waters. I've been uh, confronted with robbers. And he even talks about even uh, in, in danger with my own countrymen. Mm -hmm. you know, in danger with my own brethren, my own false brethren, my own family. I've, I've had sleepless nights. Right. I've been hungry. I've been thirsty. He said, I've been cold. There were times when I was even naked. This is this is the Apostle Paul. Yeah. Look, Paul, he Paul was committed. He endured so much, but yet in the midst of everything he endured, he did not quit. Right. He did not move away from his commitment. And mm -hmm. the problem with this, this a lot of these people today. They can't endure anything. Mm -hmm. they, they, I mean, they, they, they can't endure being chastised, right. being corrected. Right. They can't endure, you know, Pastor, I, I'm, oh, he didn't call my name. Out of all that work I did, they didn't call my name. They'll go home and mm -hmm. sit down because somebody forgot to call their name. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, somebody lied on them. Somebody stepped on their toe. 
They came to church and brother so-and-so, he know I always sit in the seat. He's sitting in my seat and pastor didn't do nothing about it. I mean, we can't deal with, endure anything. I don't know if many of these people today would have made it right. during the time of Paul. Right. Right. You know, right. Because the Bible says, if we are going to live godly. Now, mm -hmm. understand what it means. You got, you've got to research the scripture. If we're going to live godly, holy, committed to the cause. There's that word again. Living mm -hmm. godly means I'm living committed to Christ. Godly doesn't mean you're godly today and tomorrow you're ungodly. If you're going to live consistently in the ways of God, be committed mm -hmm. to, his, to his word, to his way, to his will. I told somebody today, you know, we trust his will. I may not always understand his plan, but I trust his will. You right. know, uh, I had a good friend of mine, another good friend, went home today to be with the Lord. I mean, mm -hmm. it hit me to my core. I asked to ask myself, God, what in the world is going on? Mm -hmm. I don't always understand his plan, but I trust his will. Yeah. And so if you can live godly, church, we're going to suffer some things. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through. I mean, we may not be beaten or shipwrecked like Paul was, right. uh, but we are going to experience, you talk about some grave things, con grief, the loss of loved ones, sometimes the loss of income, the loss of property, uh, sometimes broken relationships. You're going to be misunderstood. It goes along with the territory. We're in this pandemic. Right. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, next year with this pandemic. But what we have to do is resolve in our minds that I'm in it for the long haul. There right. are no other options. I mean, if I leave Christ, where else do we go? That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. And I was listening to you talking about how that uh, 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 with the attitude and the mentality of some of our people that we're dealing with in this season today, you know, you uh, just uh, wonder many times if they would be able to make it had they been, you know, in uh, the era that Paul was in when Christians was being stoned. And then my mind, the Lord just kind of fast forwarded my mind to even now in other countries, you know, in other right. countries, people are dying. They're having to die, you know, for uh, for their faith in Christ. They're having to suffer many things, you know, and uh, going through much, you know, and God has blessed us to the point that all we've got to do is just live, just make the decision to live and make the decision that I'm going to endure, you know, and I had put in, in, in my notes there that, look, your commitment your commitment does not end with the decision. That's really where it begins. Right. When you make the decision to follow Christ, you know, that's good. That's wonderful. Praise God. But it doesn't look that's where you pick up uh, uh, with your commitment. That's where it begins, because that's when uh, the enemy will uh, uh, cause things to come against you. That's when, you know, the trials are going to come. And uh, one thing about it, you know, when people are giving their life to the Lord, many times I like to tell them, you know, now you may have heard that everything, you know, was hunky dory over here in Christianity and wholeness and everything. But I want you to know that there are going to be some trials and some tribulations and some temptation because we have an adversary and his ad the, the, the job of that adversary is to try to keep us out of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But your commitment, your commitment, praise God, is going to be the thing. Thing that you are going to have to hunker down with, amen, and uh, make up in, the, in your mind that whatever comes, whatever goes, I'm going with Jesus all the way. We used to sing the song, it makes no difference what the people say, I'm going with Jesus all the way. And that's the type of commitment that we've got to have, amen. But it seemed like to a great extent, amen, it's missing uh, in our season. Yeah. You know, let me ask this question, and I certainly want those who are are, are, are listening tonight to just kind of maybe put some comments in your uh, in the in the comment section. But uh, the question would be, what is it that hinders? What is it that hinders our commitment? Mm -hmm. uh, when, when we look at where we are today, uh, you know, even when you think about a person who's running in a race. 
You know, uh, I've, I was never a track runner. Uh, mm -hmm. I've never run a period. But, but you know, I'm told yeah. that when they get ready to run track, they put those weights on their ankles. And, and you know, basically when you're running track, it's difficult to kind of run. When I, when I, oh, no, no, they put the anchors on, they put their weight on when they're practicing. Okay. Okay. They put the weight on when they're practicing, and that is to cause resistance. Okay. All uh, right. All right. Yeah. That, that's to cause resistance when you practice. And so when you're actually in the race, then you feel lighter. You feel you're lighter. So, yeah. So, 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 so the weights that are there uh, that causes resistance, mm -hmm. uh, do they, do they stop running because of the weights? No, no, no. They, they actually welcome the weight. They actually, they, they actually welcome the weight because of the fact that they understand that the weight is going to be of strength, is going to be of endurance, is going to fortify them that when, uh, the, that when the race really counts, uh, uh, they'll be able to go faster, go further because of the fact that uh, of what they have endured through the trials and through the weights. So when we talk about weights, y'all, we're not just talking about, you know, I know the Bible said lay aside every weight and sin. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're not talking about sin, but sometimes there are things that uh, the Lord will allow to come against us. Uh, the devil will use it for the purpose of stopping us. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that the devil, the Bible says he is as a roaring lion he right. is our ultimate enemy mm -hmm. the devil is our ultimate enemy now 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 understand i know flip wilson god bless his heart he's dead yeah. and gone. he yeah. said the devil made me do it. Uh -uh. <laughs> i know these young <laughs> folks they don't remember that they don't remember yeah. <laughs> i done went way back to 1970. the yeah. y'all don't know about flip wilson <clears throat> flip said the devil made me do it yeah. And honestly, y'all, the devil really can't make us do anything. Right. Uh, I know Eve ate the fruit, but the devil influenced her. Right. She was thrown away with her own lust and her and own. Yes. Uh, we must understand yes. that the devil influences us because he knows if he can weigh us down, mm -hmm. if he can stop us, you know, with problems, sickness, poverty overwhelming grief, if he can stop us with misunderstandings, if he can keep us fighting one another, if he can keep us at odds with our fellow brothers and sisters in church, come on, I'm coming down your street. Mm -hmm. If the devil can keep churches fighting against each other, denominations fighting against denominations, do you not know that will hinder us from running this race? That will hinder us from being committed. That will hinder us from being effective. So what the devil does, he throws these scenarios in our way. My time is coming to an end, but I feel it getting yeah. already. The devil throws these scenarios in our way to keep us ineffective as a church, to keep us you know, and, and Pastor, you know, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think too many of us, too many of our churches, we are just comfortable having church service with one another. All and right. to me, you all, that is so far from what God intended for the body of Christ. Woo, I'm getting in trouble. I'm yeah. getting in trouble. <laughs> God intended so much more. I need you to put that in the chat. God intended more, so much more. Yes, we come to church to get electrified. We come to church to get built up. It's the filling station. But I believe, you know, we go out into the world, into the community, into the job market, into the, you know, wh wherever we our jobs may take us. And we make an, a difference everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. If nobody wants to follow you to your church, they don't want to follow you to your house. If they just don't want to follow you, you need to question your Christianity. Mm -hmm. You need, you really need to question your commitment to God. Because if you are just like the world, why should I want to follow you? Uh, we're going to both end up in the ditch. And so 
I believe it's necessary that we look at what's hindering us from really being committed. Satan is behind it all. He's the, he's the main force behind it all. Let me say this, and, 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 and with Pastor, I want you to come in. Uh, the Bible says over there in Proverbs 23, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. In other words, your thought life, the way you think, can impact your commitment to God and to the things of God. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Don't let nobody tell you that you are not gifted by God. God has given you a gift and your gift is to impact the world for the cause of Christ. Many times, what do we do with our gifts? What do we do with our, uh, our abilities? You know, we go to school, we get an education and that's wonderful. We often start thinking, how can I use this gift to make money? How can I use this to feed my family? And that's what we should do. But you must understand your first and foremost commitment and obligation is to God. Yes. Lord, how am I to use this gift to impact the body of Christ? How am I to use this, this degree to make a difference in the world? so that the kingdom of God in the earth can be advanced. My God, what would happen, Pastor, if more people thought like that? Mm -hmm. if, we, you know, if, if, if we made him the first fruit of our increase. I mean, he was really the first. Mm -hmm. yeah. happen? Oh my. Well, you know, uh, I think that uh, without a doubt, you know, there would be, <clears throat> there would be, uh, 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 less of what the devil is manifesting because it seems as if the enemy is kind of uh, uh, on a, a, a he's it's almost to the point that he's off his leash where that he's just kind of running rampant and doing what he wants to do wow. but see the church needs to understand you know that we are the ones with the power of the Holy Ghost working in us with us and through us we are the ones who are to set the devil at bay through the Holy Ghost that's working in us, we are the one to shut him down. We're the one to rebuke him. We're the ones to cast him out. We're the ones to manifest the glory of the Lord so that people can know and understand that there is a better way, you know, outside of what they're doing and uh, uh, that, 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 that there is, there is a better way. There is a better way. And uh, you were saying, you know, that what is it, what is it that, that that's, that, that's such a hindrance, you know, and I was thinking about the scripture there in second John, I believe it's two and 16 talks about that. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, you know, and it seems as if that's what, uh, uh, it's, it's talk about it's in the world. But the thing of it is, you know, is that seeing, it seems as if it is becoming a part of the church culture as well, as well. And that's where the problem is that we are so concerned about self. We're so concerned about our own well-being, about our own survival, where that, uh, 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 what God has given us to do, the purposes of God, uh, 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 for our life, the anointing that is upon our life to be fulfilled, the purpose that is supposed to be manifest in us, it seems as if, praise God, that there is no longer a passion for that because we're concerned about our own selves, our individual selves, rather than about, praise God, the will of the Lord and what he has for us to do. And I, it seems as if, you know, the enemy has caused somewhat of a let me just call it, amen, spiritual Alzheimer, you know, to the point, you know, that we have forgotten the fact that God said, if you if you put me first, if you seek first the, the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these other things are going to be added. It seems as if we've forgotten that to the point where that, you know, we are so much concerned about uh, uh, pushing our own agenda where that what God has for us to do uh, is no longer of any importance. And, and, and you hit it on the head. You hit it on the head, pushing our own agenda. Yeah. And the whole idea about becoming a disciple is that it's self-denial. Yes. That Jesus said, if you are going to come after me, in other words, if you're going to commit to me, now this is total commitment. Now, it, you know, uh, he said, you've got to, first of all, deny 
yourself. Mm -hmm. You've got to deny your own, your own agenda. And, you know, and, and Pastor, we talked to so many people. It's all about them. It's all about what they want. It's all about making them comfortable. It's all about, you know, what's going to appease them. It's right. all about, you know, well, if it doesn't conform with my personality, you know, if it's not, you know, if it doesn't fit, you know, my my way of thinking. I mean, yeah. it's, it's them, 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 them. You've already lost the battle because yeah. you, you, you've already said, you know, I don't care what God says, you know, if his way of life, and I'm not, they don't say this with their, with their right. mouth. Right, but right. Their Actually. Actually. Their behavior, you know, if it doesn't line up, if the service is two hours, I can't come. If the choir sings too long, I can't stay. If the preacher preached more than 30 minutes, I'm out. You know, if, if I mean, it says if, 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 and we're aligning, we, we, we are aligning ourselves to become like spoiled, need to be stroked, uh, baby Christians, because that is not the sign of a mature Christian. Right, right. It's not the sign of a mature saint. Jesus said, if you're going to really come after me, You've got to deny yourself. Now, notice what he said after denial. Then mm -hmm. take up your cross, the cross. <laughs> which and suggests the cross. Yeah. suffering. Mm -hmm. Yes. We got to take up our own cross. Mm -hmm. Deny me. You know, it, it, it almost sounds like, wait a minute, this is a losing battle. Take, deny what I want. Then mm -hmm. I got to take up suffering, take up the cross and follow him. I thought yeah. I would be something better than this. But yeah. you know what? It all has to do with a perspective. When we study the word of God, it talks about even in this, this world, how the sufferings of this age mm -hmm. cannot be compared. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. So you hear my favorite scripture there. Ah, it yeah. can't be compared to the glory, glory. that's going to be revealed in us. You know, mm -hmm. which suggests that and 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 <clears throat> And, you know, I, I often say that if we're going to make it in this life, mm -hmm. Sister Stephanie, it's good to see you, Sister Bertha, my cousin, <laughs> Brother Terry. If we're going to make it in this mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. we must have an eternal perspective. Yeah. We've got to have an outlook that looks beyond where we are. Yeah. Brings us into the realm of faith. I know our time is getting away. Yeah. But in order for us to live, this life, the way God intended for us to live it, it's got to be through the eyes of faith. Otherwise, we're going to fall by the wayside every time because we're going to be looking for things to go our way. Yes. We're going to be, you know, looking for that smooth mountain and, and the smooth seas. And, and we're going to be looking for everybody to stroke us and say, hey, I like you. And you're, you know, you're beautiful and you're this and, da, 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 and all that and the other. And it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You've got to have something on the inside of you that can sustain you, mm -hmm. keep you in the day of trouble. Mm. Right. And that's well, the word of God. Yeah. And, and the thing of it is, you know, is that um, it seems as if Jesus Christ put out a disclaimer. Yes. It like he put out a, a disclaimer and you say, well, Pastor, disclaimer, what do you mean? Well, I, I'm referring to uh, uh, the word of the Lord in the 14th chapter of the book of Luke and yeah. uh, whether Jesus was talking about, uh, it, it says, which of you, you know, intending to build a tower and uh, sit it not down first, you know, to count up the cost. And see, the thing of it is, is that Jesus lets you know, first of all, that there's going to be a cost to this. It's going to cost you something. And then, see, I, I think that too many times now, and I thank God for a lot of ministries that, that are doing what they do, but it seems as if uh, uh, there is a false understanding that in Christianity that it's going to be easy, it's going to be smooth, it's going to be just uh, hunky-dory and, and peaches and cream and everything, and that's not the case. 
Jesus says that, that you need to, to, to get the real idea and count up the cost. It's going to cost you something. And look, and, and that's the thing. I believe that many people are being deceived when they get into this thing and things get a little rough. You know, they want to throw in the towel because they figure, well, uh, this is just not my cup of tea. You know, but the thing of it is, you know, is that Jesus advises us, first of all, to count up the cost, praise God. Uh, we've got to look at it and understand what it's going to cost us. And let me tell you something. Following Christ is going to cost you something because your flesh, look, you're going to have to deny your flesh. And that's something that flesh wants and desires, uh, but they cannot uh, and they are not compatible with the life that Christ wants us to live. And so right. therefore, you got to come to the point and decision, well, what am I going to do? You know, am I going to satisfy my fleshly desires or am I going to uh, follow Christ? And that's the thing. You make that commitment and you count up that cost, praise God, knowing that there is something that is going to be greater at the end if you follow Christ, obey his word, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight, all right? Without a doubt, praise God, commitment to Jesus Christ is going to cost us something, and it's going to be something of value. It's going to cost us something of value, praise God, amen. If we would just, and look, if we didn't have to commit uh, nothing more than something that doesn't mean anything to us, Praise God, amen, then it would be easy to commit and just give something that don't matter, you know. But what has to be committed and surrendered and denied is something of value, praise God, and it's going to uh, affect you in some type of way uh, uh, that uh, is going to be uncomfortable for you. But you've got to have the mindset, praise God, amen, that if I go through this, if I endure this, praise God, uh, talking about that heavenly, that, that kingdom perspective, that heavenly perspective. Amen. When you keep that in mind, then you know that uh, whatever you lose, you really don't lose That's because right. God is going to reward you greater. Yeah. And, and you know, let, let me just add to what you just said. You know, you said that that uh, it's, it's going to cost us something. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll just go and step out on the limb. So it's going to cost us everything. All right. When we follow right. Christ, we give up everything. Uh, we we surrender our entire lives mm -hmm. to him. Uh, this is what the apostles did. Yeah. They left. The Bible says they left everything right. to follow Christ. Uh, and, and, and Jesus said, you know, if, if, if you don't hate your brother, your sister, you know, your, your, your family, he said, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't follow me. Now, I understand yeah. what he meant when he said that. Right, right, right. He didn't mean hate in the sense of not loving. Right. Uh, but hate in the sense of they are not first in your life. He wanted to be first and foremost in their lives. Right. And, and, and when they left everything to follow Christ, mm -hmm. we see so many times where God performed the miraculous Right. Uh, where they were able to pull in hundreds and even thousands of fish. Don't you mm -hmm. know that gave them the ability to provide for their families? All right. <laughs> you know, All right. Why? Because they counted up the cost. Mm -hmm. They gave up everything. They were sold out completely. They were fully committed. Right. And I ask this question again for some of you that didn't catch it at the beginning. As we talk about the cost of true commitment. Are you a hog mm -hmm. or are you a hen? My goodness, my goodness. A hen only contributes eggs here and there, and she can keep on going. But the hog has to sacrifice everything in order that others may eat. Jesus Christ sacrificed everything. Right. He gave up his life that we might live. And if we are going to be victorious in this life as saints, right. y'all, we have to give up our lives. Once again, the apostle Paul, he said it over in Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm a hog. I hear you. Uh, I am crucified with Christ. Uh, yeah. He says, Paul, nevertheless, I live. Mm -hmm. Yet not. He says, I'm living but it's not me that's living. Right. He said, the life that I now live, 
I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's in him that I live. Mm -hmm. It's in him that I move. Yeah. I can't be a Christian and yet trying to hold on to Barbara. Right. I have to surrender all of Barbara. Yeah. All of my hurt, all of my idiosyncrasies, mm -hmm. all of my failures, all of my mistakes, all of everything. Once again, and I'm, I'm done, Pastor Paul says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind so that I can move on and embrace what God has for me. Y'all, we have to be willing to let it go. Mm. Let mm. everything go that's not like Christ. Right. So that we can take on his life. His life becomes our life. And it's done by faith. Are we going to feel like going to church? No. We're going to feel like praying? Absolutely not. We're going to feel like fasting? Now you know. <laughs> uh -uh. We're going to feel like witnessing? No. But we do these things because we are no longer ourselves. We've been bought with the price. Our bodies, we don't even own our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We belong to Christ. We are his ambassadors. We move at his command. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And I tell you, I, I'm going to make this last point and then we're going to pray. And that is the fact that, you know, <clears throat> In this season, the enemy is doing everything that he can, praise God, to cause us to lose faith. Yes. Uh, cause us to lose faith. I mean, that's 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 where everything is. You know, uh, 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 the, the, the Daniel Daniel, uh, I think uh, chapter seven talks about how that uh, the enemy is uh, has the intent or the desire to 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 wear the saints down, to wear the saints down, you know, and uh, cause things and allow things, you know, to happen, to keep on happening to the point that they just wear the saints down. But, and and the idea is to cause our faith to be weakened or to be diminished. But that's why Hebrew tells us to build up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So there's some things that we've got to do in order to keep our faith built up and to uh, be fortified against the enemy that comes, praise God, to diminish our faith so that we can call, so that he can cause us, praise God, to be weakened and fail in the purposes and the things of God and in our commitment. But I want to say to you on tonight, praise God, those of you who are listening, those of you who have chimed in, praise God, amen, this is for you. Uh, no matter where you are, praise God. If you are a faithful person, amen, a faithful member, then that's good, amen. But I want you to know that that's even greater for you to do, all right? There are higher heights and there are deeper depths, praise God. We thank God for you if you're faithful, but even that's more, all right? For those of you, praise God, who have uh, become laxed and laxed the days ago, praise God, certainly this is for you. For God, amen, has given you the opportunity to pick up the slack, as the old people used to say, and hew to the line. Get back in line. Get back engaged. Get back committed. Get back focused, praise God. Get back to prayer. Get back to the word of the Lord, praise the Lord, so that you can, and these are all the things that are necessary for building up ourselves on our most holy faith, praise God, amen. And so, we want to pray for you, praise God, and we hope and trust, amen, that this study uh, has, and this dialogue, praise God, has some way uh, stirred your hearts and pricked your minds, praise God, to the point that uh, uh, that it has reignited the, 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 the desire uh, uh, and reignited the flame and the fire of evangelism on the inside of you to understand that there is more that has to be done and that this is not the time for giving up. This is not the time for being weak, but it's time for being strong as never before. It's time as never before to get engaged uh, in the ministry to do what God has called you to do and to allow him to use you in this season. Praise God. This is the type of season that determines and that demonstrates your commitment. All right. When things are going well, when you've got money in the bank, praise God. Amen. It's easy to just say, yes, Lord. Praise God. But do in times of trouble, times of stress, times of strain, 
These are the type of situation that demonstrate your commitment. And I hope that in your heart and your mind that you want God to be able to depend on you because that's what it's really all about. All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father. Yes. Go ahead. Lady Bob. Before you pray, there, there, there is somebody that's watching this, this presentation tonight. And that individual is literally on the verge of giving up. My, my, my. I'm sensing in my spirit. There's a particular person. You, mm. you, your heart has become so filled with bitterness mm. uh, because of what has transpired the last almost two years. Uh, things have happened in your family. You've lost members. Um, and, and, and you're just you're angry that there, there, there's an angerness that you are dealing with right now. Mm. And to the point where you're almost at a point of bitterness and, and you allowing that bitterness to, to sort of uh, 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 overwhelm you, overwhelm your thought, overwhelm your ability to make decisions. Now you're at a point where you just feel like there are other options. As we were talking earlier in the, in the broadcast, in the teaching session tonight, that people are looking for options and you are one of those individuals. You are looking for options. I hear the Holy Ghost speaking to you right now saying this is not the time for quitting mm -hmm. oh my god you're you, you're in a dark period you're in a dark place the enemy is trying to overwhelm your mind uh mm -hmm. to the point where you even starting to think uh thoughts that are not even like you oh hallelujah mm -hmm. god says it's time for you to allow the word of god to penetrate your thoughts and go back and do your first works over again. Yeah. He says, oh, I, I hear the Lord saying, I have not forgotten you. Mm -hmm. I have not abandoned you. Oh, I have not failed you. Right. I'm talking to that individual. Mm -hmm. God says, this is your season now to allow him to heal that hurt, that brokenness, even as we talked about committing. God wants you to commit all of that to him. That yeah. anger, that bitterness, you can commit it to him right now. And in return, God is going to give you, oh, the garment of praise. Hallelujah. For that spirit, that spirit of heaven is in you that's trying to overwhelm you. This is, this is, yeah. if this message wasn't for anybody else, it was for you. For you. Yes. Go ahead and pray, baby. You're rolling. You're rolling. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Father Thank God, you. in the yes. name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In fact, you that, are, you that are watching, you that are viewing mm -hmm. this, I want you to begin to even intercede Jesus. on behalf Jesus. of others. You can pray mm -hmm. in the chat. Begin to put mm -hmm. words of prayer in the chat. God, we thank you. We praise mm -hmm. you. We adore your wonderful name. You are God. There is none beside you. There is yes, none greater than you. We thank you, God, that you, oh, God, you. Up. you are the great physician. Thank you are you. the restorer of yes, life. Yes, and God, yes, I pray God. even now mm. that you will lift that individual, mm. that individual that's on the thank verge you. of quitting on the verge of throwing in the tile, on the verge of giving up. God, they're looking in the direction for other options, yes. but it's a plot, it's a plan of the devil, oh yes. God, to overwhelmingly kill and destroy their life. And Jesus. so right Jesus. now we bind the hand mm. of the enemy that yes. comes to destroy. We bind the hand of the enemy that comes to steal. Yes. We Find the hand of the enemy that comes, oh God, to bring deep-rooted spirits of depression mm -hmm. and heaviness and spirits of giving up. We yes. bind you right yes. now and yes. we recommit yes. our lives, yes, we rededicate yes. our lives yes. to your yes. purpose, God, and to Amen. your will. Yes. In the name of, In Jesus, the name of Jesus, we decree that Amen. even after tonight yes. we are making a 180 degree turn Hallelujah. away from moving in the wrong Jesus. direction yes. and God we are turning our mm. face to you we're turning oh God and looking unto Jesus mm. you are the author and the finisher of our faith and mm. God I thank you right now that we are taking back everything that the mm. enemy have yes. stolen yes. he's trying yes. to 
steal our joy. Mm. He's tried to steal our peace. He's tried to steal our commitment. Mm. Devil, you are a liar and the father of lies. Yeah. We take it back by force for the kingdom of God has suffered violence, but the violent takes it by force. Devil, we're not going to roll over and play dead, but instead we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I thank you, oh God, that I feel my strength coming back. I feel my joy coming back. I feel even as Samson felt his hair growing. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, coming back. God, we feel our hair growing. Yes. Oh, God, yes. we feel it bubbling up on the inside. Yes. And we thank you, mm. God, that we will not take God. down. We will not thank give up. Jesus. We will not yes, give up. Yes. But yes. we'll stand our ground. And having done our mm. hand, we're going to stand there for Jesus. knowing that if God be for us, mm. he's more than the world against us. Thank you today, God. I thank you today, hallelujah, yes. that I will not lose my faith. Thank I will you, contend for the faith that yes, was Lord. once delivered yes, to the saints. Hallelujah. I will not lose my testimony you, because Jesus. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by yes. the words of my testimony. Yes. God, I yes. thank you. Mm. Hallelujah. Today, but this is the day that you made, yes. and I'm choosing to rejoice. Yes. No matter what it looks like, no matter what I feel like, Thank we you, choose Jesus. to rejoice and be glad in this day. Thank and you, I'm Jesus. God, that I'm recommitting. I'm recommitting to yes, praise. Yes, I'm yes, recommitting to prayer. Yes. I'm recommitting to study of your word. Hallelujah. I'm recommitting, oh God, to fasting. Mm. I'm recommitting to living holy. Oh, yes. God, because I can't do it in and of myself, but with you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I thank you today. Hallelujah. It is, it's well. It's well. It is well in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Thank, thank you, God. Jesus. Amen. 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 Beloved of God, praise God. Amen. Thank God for that powerful prayer. We thank God for even the word from Lady Barbara as that individual whom the Lord was speaking to on tonight. I pray, amen, that you have prayed this prayer and that you received the victory. Praise God. Amen. That the spirit of heaviness has been lifted off of you and that you will begin to uh, adorn yourself with the spirit of praise. Hallelujah. Just giving thanks unto the Lord because he has viewed you valuable. He has viewed you valuable enough to speak to your heart and to your mind and tonight and not allow you to just go by the wayside. Hallelujah. So honor the Lord for that. Honor him. Praise God. Amen. And let him, let him have his way in you. Praise God. Come on back and do what the Lord says do. Come on back and renew. Get your strength renewed. Come on back. Praise God, even after that prayer, amen. As you said, you ought to sense, amen, a, a, some strength, praise God, coming forth. Hallelujah, praise God. And we bless God in the name of Jesus. And uh, those of you who have received, amen, have been blessed of the Lord, praise God. You can put it in the chat box, amen. If you want to uh, reach out and touch us, praise God, amen, personally, then you can reach us, praise God, by text. Uh, you can text us at 901-450-9739. Praise God. Amen. If you have specific uh, a thing that you want to say, praise God. Amen. Then you can reach us by text at 901-450-9739. All right. Praise God. And we love, praise God, to know that God is blessing, that God is doing great things, and that you are being strengthened in the power of God. Praise God. It is just our desire to see the will of the Lord done in your life, to see God purpose manifest and praise God, and you see you growing and getting stronger and stronger as you mature in the things of God. Amen. And certainly he'll be causing you to succeed and to overcome. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Look, I want I, I, I will not praise God. Amen. Uh, close. Amen. Without giving you the opportunity to sow a seed into this ministry on tonight, the Victorious Faith Ministries Church of God in Christ. Praise God. You can do it. The information, praise God, is scrolling at the bottom of the screen now. Uh, you can do it, praise God, through Give the Five. Just look for Victorious Faith Ministries in Antibena, Mississippi, praise God. Uh, or you can do it through Cash App. 
Our cash tag is dollar sign VFM C O G I C. Praise God. Amen. If you can do that, amen, sow a seed. Uh, if you can't do it digitally, then drop it in the mail. All right. You can address it to P.O. Box uh, 313. That's uh, make your, your, your gift payable to uh, a check or money order payable to Victorious Faith Ministries or VFM. Amen. Drop it in the mail to P.O. Box 313, Itabini, Mississippi, 38941. Praise God. And certainly, I know that God is going to bless you for helping to support this endeavor as we aspire, as we aspire to test live, to upbuild the community. And thank God, amen, that through this social media platform, praise God, that we can reach out, amen, from state to state, from across the country, and even into other countries. Praise God, amen. The Lord bless and say the same. So sow a seed, praise God, amen. And don't try to just uh, barely get by, but sow, sow your best seed, sow your best seed, praise God, amen. And those of you who can, then perhaps, amen, the Lord will allow you to sow a $20 offering. If you can do that, praise God, it would help us greatly. And I know, praise God, that God will uh, bless and restore and cause you to prosper in him, praise God, uh, and not allow it to be a burden to you, but allow it to be a blessing. God bless you. God strengthen you and the Lord keep you. The Lord strengthen you. Lady B, praise God. Amen. Thank you again. Uh, I always appreciate and just uh, uh, enjoy uh, sharing and uh, uh, dialoguing with you. Praise God as we be a blessing to the people in the ministry. Thank you. I always enjoy being here with you. It's wonderful. And uh, I guess if the the, uh, if our onlookers, if you all like uh, Pastor Sego and I teaching together, uh, let us know in the chat and uh, mm -hmm. we may just kind of carry on and do a little bit more of this, but let us know. In all, the right. Chat. all right, all right, all right, all right. It's dual teaching. But, uh, Amen. I, Amen. Thank you so much for letting me co-teach with you tonight. <laughs> Well, look, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Praise God. Amen. I know that you, uh, I heard you say at the beginning of the of, of the uh, session, amen, that I was the better half. But I tell you, I might be your better half, but you're my better half. All right. And so we appreciate you so very, very much. And we thank God for you. I love you dearly. Love you to life. Praise God. And I'm, I'm enjoying doing ministry with you. Praise God. Amen. Before we get too mushy here, let's get up. Let's get off the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pray for my husband. Pray for <laughs> Praise God. God bless you, beloved of God. Look, we thank God for you. Those of you who have been a part of this session on tonight, pray for us. Praise God. Amen. And uh, we're certainly still praying for those who are uh, uh, recently bereaved, those, praise God, who are, uh, are still expecting to lay their loved ones to rest. Uh, we're praying for you and just believe in God for greater things. Amen. So even in this season, I can say, let's just challenge, praise God, to just hunker down and commit. Just make the commitment and just decide that whatever it takes, Lord, that here I am. Praise God. Here am I. Send me. That's what uh, uh, Isaiah, praise God, said. I Just send me. I I'll go. God bless you. God strength you and the Lord keep you. Praise God. Amen. Any other not so concerns, Lady B? Uh, let me just say, those who are available uh, to meet us tomorrow morning, uh, we will be praying at 6.30 a.m. for only 30 minutes. And uh, if you are available to meet us tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., uh, we'd love for you to join us. Uh, the number to call is 807, I'm sorry, 267-807-9605. Uh, the access code is... Uh, 614339 pound. We have a wonderful uh, prayer warrior. In fact, two wonderful prayer warriors from that's going to be praying with us tomorrow morning. Uh, one from Michigan and uh, one from uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, Maryland. So if you are available, 30 minutes of prayer tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. until 7 a.m. We have the number there on the screen. Uh, 267 807 9605. Access code is 614339 pound. That's at 6 30 a.m. tomorrow for only 30 minutes. We'd love for you to join us and spend some quality time in prayer with us. Thank you. Those of you that might be praying from different states under a different time zone, we that 6 30 is Central Standard Time. 
yes. right? At 6.30 Central Standard Time. If you are in a state that is different from that, then adjust, adjust, praise God, so that you won't miss us. Amen. And I know that it'll be a blessing to you to start off your day, praise God, just giving God that little time, all right? May the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you as our prayer. May he strengthen you. May your rest be a blessing tonight. May your sleep be sweet. And may the glory of God awake you in the morning, ready to take on a new day in him. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Love all right. you all. God bless you all. Zeb, Dita, Terry, everybody that chimed in. Jennifer, Kevin, I see you all. So Alicia. God bless all, all right. you guys. We love you all to life. Magdalene, have a good night. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye.